Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina mursalim ve ala alihi ve sahbihi tefriman kafira. Allahümme salli ve sellem ala seyyidina Muhammed. Fatimi lima uglik ve khatimi lima sabaka nasıl hak bil hak. Vel hadi ila şeratika ve mustakim. Ve ala alihi hakkı kadrihi ve mekdarihi ile azim. Esselamu aleykum ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Tabi inşallah we're going to continue with the akidah. Nabi bin Abi Zayd al-Karawani rahimahullah and so we begin today's lesson from the line where he says wa ma tasqata min warakatin illa ya'lamuha wa la habbatin fi dhulamat al-ard wa la ratbin wa la yabisin illa fi kitab mubin in translation he says that he created I'm sorry he says that um, there's no leaf that falls without him knowing it, knowing of it, nor is there any seed in the darkness of the earth, nor any wet thing or any dry thing, nor uh, or that is not in a clear book. Now, so no leaf falls without him knowing. Of course, talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a an ayah from Surah Al-An'am. No leaf falls without him knowing of it, nor is there any seed in the darkness of the earth, nor any wet thing or any dry thing that is not in the clear book. So, Shaykh Ahmad al rahimahullah he says, يعني ورقة في عراق أشجار Okay, so these are the leaves from trees. أي ورقة كانت من أي شجرة كانت so the leaves from trees, he's talking about waraka, okay, arak is the plural, as jar, the leaves of trees, okay, فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ سُكُوتَهَا كَمَا يَعْلَمُ ابْتِدَاءِ ابْتِدَاءٍ وَجُودَهَا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when they fall, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when they began, when they became into existence, right? Allah knows when it's going to fall. To have the distance and the state, masafata muhallaha, umutta tu bikaiha. Allah knows how long it's going to live, how long it's going to be in existence. Wasakanuha, how long how long it will uh, remain there in the stillness, in this movement. Watafsilu abadiha. Allah knows all the details of 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 each part of it. There's nothing that Allah does not know. وَهِيزَهَا وَكَيْفِيَتِهَا وَمَكَانَ سُكُوتَهَا وَكَيْفَ تَسْكَتَ Allah knows when it's going to fall, how it's going to fall. Okay, the place and where it's going to fall. هَا لِذُخِّهَا أَوْ لِبَطِنِهَا أَوْ وَتْبَتِنْ أَوْ يَابِسَتِنْ Okay, on um, the Outward of it or the inward of it, whether it's wet or dry. Rama yaskwaka dalika. Rama yansha anhu. Rama yus ma yusif ma yusahibuhu min al safiha wa kawasiha wa hkamuha wa hkamiha wa ashrariha illa ghiru dalika fi shaniha. So Allah knows all the details. Okay, Allah knows all the details and characteristics, the general and the specifics of each leaf that falls on every tree all over the world uh, that's ever come into existence. So he's giving us a picture, uh, a mental picture of the vastness of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are all examples of similitudes in which we can draw in our minds because there's no human being that's capable of knowing this type of knowledge. Impossible. But in saying that this is something that is within the knowledge of Allah, it separates him far above what we could possibly imagine. Now, 
وتعلق العلم هو بذلك قبل وجودها. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows even about the leaf, even everything before it came into existence, before He brought it into existence. Allah knows. Allah knows every intricate detail about it. The lifespan, where it will fall, okay, how it will be, everything. وَهَارَ تُكَوْنَهَا وَبَعْدُ وُجُودَهَا وَيَتْقَلُوا فِي ذَلِكَ وَلَكَ شَرْجِنَةٍ أَعْمَارِ بَنِ آدَمْ وَهِيَ عَلَى مَا رُوِيَ شَجْرَةٍ تَحْدَ الْعَرْشِ تُشْبِهُ رُمَانَ وَوَرَكَهَا عَلَى عَدَدِ بَنِ آدَمْ مَكْتُوبَ فِي كُلِّ وَرَكَةٍ عُمَرْ وَرَكَةٍ عُمَرُ صَاحِبُهَا وَمَالِكَ الْمَوْتُ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهَا So it's likened to the lineage. Okay, he likened this tree to the lineage of Bani Adam, of mankind. And just that he knows the intricate details of the leaf or the leaves of trees. He knows every intricate detail of the lives of all human beings. And so what he's saying is Um, like it's been narrated, وَهُوَيَا عَلَى مَا رُوَيَا شَجُرَ تَحْتَ الْعَرْشِ The tree under the throne, تُشْبِهُ الرَّمَانَةِ وَرَكَهَا عَلَى عَدَدِ بَانِ عَادَمْ مَكْتُوبُ فِي كُلِّ وَرَكَةِ عُمَرْ So written under the throne, you have a tree, okay, that's written all of the lives of people and their lifespans, okay? And the angel of death looks at, at this tree where he can see the lifespan of every individual to come into existence. So the Malik Ramot, the angel of death, knows when he will be sent to take the life of an individual because it's already been written. Everything is written from the beginning to the end. Your lifespan is already done. It's written. Kalas. So there's a lot of similitude and examples that we can draw from this one ayah, he says, وَإِذَا أَسْفَرَتْ وَرَكَتَ الْإِنسَانِ إِلْمَ أَكْرَبُ أَجْلِهِ وَإِذَا سَقَتَتْ فَقَدَ اسْتَوْفَى ثُمَّ إِنْ سَقَتَ لِوَجْهِهَا فَالشَّقِي وَإِنْ سَقَتَ عَلَى ظَهْرِهَا فَالسَعِيدِ وَاللَّهُ عَالَمْ And so, just as though the tree will fall on its back or on its face. And you look at the similitude of how Man lives and man dies as an example. If man falls on his face, he's a wretched individual. Meaning he led a life where he led a life of sin and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he falls on his back, that he will be happy, he will be Sa'id, felicitous, because he led a life where he enjoyed the good and forbid the wrong. He led, he, led a, he led a life of being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the intricate details of every leaf and the darkness of light, on every tree in the world from the time of the earth was created to the time that the earth will, will, will go out of existence. Allah knows the lives of man, every, everyone that's born and everyone that dies. From the time of the creation, from the time of Adam alayhi salam to the end of time. And this shows the grandiosity of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there's nothing that he does not know. Whether you speak something out loud or you whisper it within your own self, Allah knows it. So what this does in our minds is it separates man from his creator. And that the creator is Ulu. He's so superior to anything that we can possibly imagine. So without even without understanding the that or the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we understand his knowledge 
and the depth and the vastness of his knowledge that is muhit jami'an, that it encompasses every intricate detail of, of existence. It's enough for us to understand who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. It's enough for us to understand that he is the creator of the creation. It's enough for us not to go and to delve into questions about his essence. Those people who don't understand the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or don't acknowledge it or don't believe it, then they are the ones who will ask questions and go into these type of issues. And so further explanation when he says, Wala habbatin fi dhulamatil ardi, wala rachibin, wala yabisin, illa fi kitabin mubin. Kala yahtamilu an yurida wala taskata, min habbatin, watibatin, wala yabisatin, aw ma yakunu min habbatin, watibatin, wala yabisatin, aw la yakunu min watibatin, wala yabisatin, habbatin, أو غيرها إلا كتاب إلا كتابه إلا كتابه هو الله المحفوظ مبين مفصها عن ذلك وكيلا وكيلا كتاب مبين علم الله وهبة إبارة عن أكل خليل طيب so he says that um this these words ولا هبة that there is no seed in the darkness of the earth. A habba is a seed. So you take a seed and you plant it in the ground. In the darkness of night, you take a black seed of whatever it may be, and it plant it in the darkness of night. Okay? In the darkness of the earth, whether it's wet or whether it's dry, Allah knows it, and it's, it's in a clear book. I mean, it's, in, it's within the knowledge of Allah. It's written down. So he says, وَيَحْتَمِلُ عَنْ يَرِيدَ وَلَا تَسْقَتَ مِنْ هَبَّتٍ That no seed is planted, whether it's dry, whether it's wet or dry, or whether it is, the seed is, it's, whether it's from dry seeds or wet seeds, or whether it's both together, it's irrelevant, except that it's in a book, and that book is the Lahu Mahfud, is the written tablet, the wooden tablet, and that Allah's Qadr is written on. Mubin, it's clear. Mafsaha and Dharika, Wakil al Mubin in Mullah. When he says mubin, it means it's been said by opinion. This means the knowledge of Allah. And the hubba is, a, is an expression on the least amount of what it is. A hubba is like a dot, a speck. Right? So this is interpretive. How people are, interpret the verse of what Allah is saying. That is not necessarily, it's not, may not be necessarily literal, it can be taken literally, but then there's a no, no more um, unseen in meanings and interpretations to it, or inward interpretations to it. That if he says the Mubin, it represents the knowledge of Allah. The Habba represents the least of knowledge of Allah. Well, 25 free to watch be, well, Yabisi. So the difference of opinion about what is what is meaning by wet and dry. Some say it's am wa khusus, wakila am fi kulli shay, mimma le anna wak limma mimma le anna wakasan. Wakila watch within kalba mu'min. Some say that for yabish, something that's dry means something general. The Allah knows the generals. Okay, the, the, not necessarily the, the, the generality of things. And rutbah will be the, specific, the specifics. Some say that the rutbah means the heart of the believer. And that the, the yabish represents the heart of the kafir. 
So this can be interpreted different ways. It's just different ways of looking at it. And you find this in the, tef- in the books of Tafsir on the outward meaning and the inward meaning, the spiritual meaning of what can be understood by this ayah. Naam. So, again, he goes into more where he says that the Watab could be the people of the city, and the Yabis, the dry, could be people of the Badia, the, 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 the desert. Okay? art matahta tachumaha wa asfala safilin maksudu ithbati ilmu ta'ala bima dakka wajjala dakkala wajjala wa tiba'a al-Qur'an so he's drawing similitudes of what these possibilities of they can mean or what they could represent. Um, meaning those people in the desert, those in the city, those at the top, those at the bottom. The purpose is to establish the lost knowledge. Okay? And whoever seeks and follows it in the Quran, Allah says to that, وَإِنْدَهُ مِفَاتِهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْكُتُ مِنْ وَرَكَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا هَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا وَتْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Allah says that with him is the knowledge of the unseen or the keys to the unseen. The mifatihul ghayb. وَلَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوَ Things that no one knows except for Allah. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَبَحْرِ And Allah knows what is on the land as well as on the sea. وَمَا تَسْكُتُ مِنْ وَرَكَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا and nothing falls, okay, except Ya'lamuha, except that he knows it, wala hab button, wala dhula wala hab button fi dhulumat al ardi, wala rachibin wala yabishin illa fi kitabin mubin. As he says, and no leaf falls without him knowing it, nor is there any seed in the darkness of the earth, nor any wet thing or dry thing that is not in a clear book. بَلْ يَعْلَمُوا دَبِيبُ نَمْلَةِ السَّوْدَاءِ عَلَى سَخْرَةِ سُمَاءِ فِي اللَّيْلَةِ الظُّلَمَاءِ وَيُبْشِرَ هَرَكَةَ الذَّرِّ فِي الْجَوِّ الْحَوَاءِ وَيَتْلَعَ عَلَى هَوَاجِسِ عَلَى هَوَاجِسِ الدَّمَاعِرِ وَكَفَيَاتِ الشِّرَاعِرِ بِإِلْمِ قَدِيمِ قَائِمُ بِذَاتِهِ وَلَا بِإِلْمِ مُتَجَدِّدِ حَاسِلُ فِي ذَاتِهِ بِالْحُلُولِ وَلِنْتِقَالِ تَعَالَ رَبَّنَا عَنْ ذَلِكَ أُلُوًا خَبِيرًا أُلُوًا خَبِيرًا Subhanallah, Allah, it's beautiful. So what he says that, even if you take a black ant, a black ant and put it on a black rock, and on the black, and the darkness of night, and the black night, Right? Allah knows the movements of that ant when it's still, when it moves. Allah knows what the ant sees. Allah knows the inward workings of the ant. Allah knows every single detail of that ant. And Allah knows, Allah knew it would be there when it's there. And he says something very important that we have to understand. And he said, That this knowledge, the knowledge of Allah, is that it, the knowledge precedes its pre eternal, its pre existence, meaning that Allah's knowledge is before existence. Allah knew that ant, that black ant on the black rock on that black night. Before the ant was came, before the ant came into existence, I knew the, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knew the details, just as Allah knows all of our movements and our whispers and our sayings and our inward secrets and our outward uh, outward uh, um, 
our exclamations. Allah knows everything before we create it. And this knowledge is part of his that, his essence. It's not separate. Allah's knowledge didn't, is not new. Allah didn't, nothing happens and Allah says, oh, he, then he knows about it afterwards. It's not new knowledge to Allah. Allah knew it before it. Allah knows, Allah, Allah knows, Allah knows what it's going to do before it does it. Allah knows what we are going to do before we do it. Allah knows what you're going to say before you say it. Allah knows what you're going to think before you think it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far above, so superior, and so great above what we attribute to him, what people attribute to him. Our intellect cannot understand the essence of Allah. But we marvel at the attributes, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how we know him. This is how we gain ma'rifah of Allah. So in understanding this, we understand, we can understand in our limited intellectual capacity. At least, who Allah is. It tells us that whatever we attribute to Allah is not befitting of his essence. It's not befitting of his sublime grandiosity. Because what he can do and what he does, nothing and no one else can do. What he, Allah knows, no one else knows. Because he holds the keys to the unseen. As he said in the Quran. So these lines are important to understand. It should be memorized. It should be memorized and it should be reviewed and it should be understood. Um, each word in the commentary, if possible, it should be rehearsed over again. At this point in the text, uh, we're still in the very beginnings of it. You should be going over it every day, line by line, and repeat and repetition and memorization, and making sure that you understand each word and each line, and you have the understanding from Ahmad Aru, okay, of what he's saying and what it means. Because it's very important. This is the most important subject in Islamic studies. If you have the sound aqidah, then everything else will be sound. If you have, if you, if you have a foul or a, a corrupt aqidah, then everything else will follow it as well. So if you have any questions with that, we'll end and we'll go on to the next line, inshallah, in our next video. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi tasliman kathira. Subhana rabbika rabbi izzat al-amma yashifun wa salamun ala mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.